Thanks for checking out this video. Don't forget, like and subscribe. And you know, The Miz, I had a lot of people talking about The Miz's heel turn on the chat earlier today, and I was like, why? So here's the deal, okay? I know some of you, some of you think, well, it's just because Brian really doesn't like The Miz. No. No, they're trying to get over Karrion Cross. It has in nothing any way to do possible. with that. Here's the thing, okay? Yes. Miz, like, he sucks as a babyface, okay? Well, that's true. He sucks as a babyface. I mean, he's been there long enough, and it's kind of like a new audience, and he can be positioned in a way where he will get cheered. But the fact is, he sucks as a babyface. He'd probably tell you the same thing himself. He's much better as a heel. And dude, he's been a babyface for a long time. Like, did anyone not know this was coming? Of course you knew it was coming. Now, the thing with it was, I thought the turn itself sucked. And I'll tell you why. Because it's not like, you know, they had just won the tag team titles at WrestleMania and then and then Truth screwed his friend the next day. Or maybe they're about to win the titles and Miz screws him after they've been teaming together and everything. Bro, Truth has been gone for like months, okay? He comes back. He signs Miz to a match where he they know they're going to get killed. Truth doesn't because in storyline he's an idiot. Miz is like, my God. I have to go in there with AOP and this clown. And so, as it turns out, he does, you know, he gets the first tag and he turns on truth and leaves. So, it was like, it wasn't even out of nowhere in like a good way. It's like truth just came back. It was their first match together. Uh, first off, how could we care, you know? And then Miz turns on the guy. And, you know, as a person, I don't even like Miz all that much, but I watched this and I was like, truth totally deserved that. Like, this guy's, this guy's been so stupid in storyline. He does all these stupid things that we're supposed to laugh at. But in reality, he's like, screwed Miz left and right. Miz is constantly <laughs> killed oh because God. of this guy. Brian cheered at the end of Mice and Men when he shot Lenny, for heaven's sake. Well, did, oh, my well, God. I mean, did Lenny deserve it? I haven't read that book in so long, I don't remember. The townspeople say he did, but... Well, you know, I don't know. Maybe I'll read the book again. But what I do know is that... Truth deserved it. He deserved it. So I'm supposed to feel bad? I didn't like that. But I'll you tell you blame, what I did like. You can blame Odyssey Jones for all of that because this just feels like they decided to drop a piece into a puzzle with our truth in the Miz once Odyssey Jones was gone and you were going to have Xavier Woods turn on Kofi in a completely different way because they still seem to be going in that direction with them. But taking Odyssey Jones out of the mix... That's why this feels like, okay, great. Forget about the Miz and our truth for a second. The AOP carry and cross part of this thing. Triple H has been really behind, or Paul Levesque has been really behind carry and cross. They let him go. They brought him back, the entire group. And he is dead set on getting them over. I don't know if he's going to be able to get them over to a incredible degree, to a worthwhile Well, once degree. Miz is involved... Everything's going to change. Well, the fortunes and, will change. And now that you're, again, you have Miz and our truth and you're doing kind of a rehash with, with them, like, at the end of the day, I don't see how this is really going to benefit anybody. And I know you need to have mid-card feuds. I just, I, I'm waiting on the magic to happen when it comes to, you know, AOP and, and carrying cross and it ain't happening yet. I'm not. Who cares? Let's talk about what's important. What's that? Last monster standing. That was awesome. You know, when we read the lineup yesterday, I thought, you know, this this match should main event, but I don't think it's gonna. They're gonna end with, like, CM Punk and Drew McIntyre or something to build up the pay-per-view. Strowman and Braun aren't even on the pay-per-view. So, uh, I mean... Oh, by the way, on my notes here, I... Strowman versus Braun Breaker. God. These three Brauns I hope they are have a triangle absolutely, match one day. Oh. absolutely killing me. But anyway... Okay. Before you move on, what do you think about I'm not moving nice, on. nice Braun Breaker? I'm not moving on. I'm going to finish this, then I'll talk about that. Okay. So it's Braun Strowman and Bronson Reed, and they got the main event slot. These two men can say, we main evented the last three-hour Raw in the history of cable TV. <laughs> Good for them. I was proud of them. I was happy oh for them. Oh, my God. They can read it off like The Miz does all his accomplishments. So this, uh, like I noted, this Braun hurt himself. 
may have torn his groin. Ooh. And uh, they ended up still having this great match. And there was only one thing wrong with the match. And it wasn't even anything anybody did. It was the booking of the referee. Like, this referee in storyline, Adam Pierce needs to fire this guy immediately. He was such an idiot. It's so the theme of this show today. They've got, uh, they've got a, a, the barricade. And there's the barricade by the timekeeper. And there's also the barricade behind the timekeeper. So first, they do the big spear, and they go through the timekeeper barricade, and they're both there dead. But now the wall's gone. So then they do a second spear. It goes through the second barricade, and allegedly, fans go flying. They go, my God, they actually, they, they've hit fans. And so all of a sudden they send, I swear to God, like 25 security people start rushing down to ringside to make sure these fans are okay and to provide them with copious amounts of merch. So they're, they're, they're all out there, all right? There's 25 people to tend to. And if you look at it, it's like three fans fell down, three of these alleged fans. So they sent out 25 people, Adam Pierce, everybody to take care of these guys. So as this happened... You know, Bronson's like, who cares about these fans? I'm going to beat up this guy. So he throws him in the ring, and he goes up top, and he hits a tsunami, and Braun Strowman is dead. But Bronson looks around, and there's no ref. Why? Because this stupid ref is out there with the 25 other security guys and Adam Pierce to check on the fans. It's like, dude, there's 25 people out there. Go do your job. But he's not there. So, you know, Bronson's screaming at the ref, get back here, you idiot! And so he decides he's going to do another tsunami. So this was actually a production faux pas. He goes to do another tsunami, and the ref comes back, and he's outside, and he's screaming at Bronson, get down off the ropes! Even though it's last month or standing, I don't know why he's doing that. So I'm thinking, okay, well, the ref's back. So my thought was, you know, probably Bronson's going to move, and then we're going to do whatever finish we've got. But no, Bronson hits another tsunami. I'm like, that's got to be it. But then Bronson gets up and the ref is gone again. He went back with the fans. Now Bronson's furious. So, you know, they do some more stuff. And uh, the reason all the guys were out there, the other reason was because then Braun Strowman climbs up to the post and he dives onto all of these, uh, these geeks outside. And keep in mind, he's got a torn groin. I don't think he's ever done a dive off the post in his life. But this guy's like, it's the main event of the last three-hour Raw ever on cable TV. I'm doing it! And he dives off, and everybody falls down. And uh, so then, you know, they get back, and now poor, you know, Braun's got to try and climb the ropes with his torn groin. This poor guy can barely get up there. But Bronson cuts him off with a chair shot, and then they do the giant big show superplex. The ring breaks. Thank God this idiot referee went flying. It's flying out of the ring. And so was impressed. Yeah, both guys are gone. They're dead. And so the referee comes back, and he's, well, they're down. I must count. And I actually thought, are we going to do, like, a double count out in a last man standing match to build to another one? I was so excited. But I start counting, and Bronson starts to get to his feet, and he starts climbing over, and he's trying to help himself up. There's steps in the ring. And all of a sudden, great booking. It's the return of Seth Rollins, who's been out a month or six weeks or whatever because Bronson Reed gave him like eight tsunamis one day, which was an awesome angle. And he returns and he gives Bronson Reed the curb stomp onto the steps. The place goes nuts. Braun Strowman with his torn groin makes it to his feet. He's declared the winner. And it was like, I mean, it was it was great. Because as much as the referee was stupid, it's like, this Bronson Reed's been awesome. And you know what? This Bronson Reed has an out. He had this match won if it wasn't for that stupid referee. But the stupid referee not being there was for a reason, because fans got killed. They had all the people go out to help the fans, which helped Braun Strowman do the big dive. Seth ends up hitting Bronson with his big move to cost him the match after Bronson took him out for six weeks. I mean, everything was perfect. This match was great. It was great. It was well-booked. It got everybody over. The fans loved it. I thought this was just a great... You know what? It was worth watching one more three-hour Raw (laughs) just to see this match in its entirety. I'll say that. 
the entire angle has been great to lead up to this point. There have been some slips here and there, but as you mentioned, Seth Rollins coming back, you know, Braun getting the victory, Bronson having a way out, even though he had the loss, and still going on to face Seth Rollins now in matches that are... I'm really looking forward to these because, obviously... We've seen Bronson Reed work with all sorts of guys, especially in New Japan. We've seen them do it a lot now in WWE. There's, It's almost impossible for me to believe that these matches will not be show stealers. They won't be the main event on any of the pay-per-views, I don't think, go, going forward. But they have a chance to really steal the show with what they do. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.